This is Arusha, otherwise known as the Geneva of Africa. I'll explain why in a second, but this city was chosen to be the headquarters for the East African community, an organization that wants to manifest itself into the world's newest and Africa's first great power, the East African Federation. And this is very interesting, because if you look at what this would entail, the economic power these countries would have to gather, as well as the global impacts of an organization like this, you will quickly understand why it's being discussed. Now, the reason for Arusha being chosen as the headquarters for this organization is quite simple. As it hosts the International Court for the African Union and continues to host international organizations with the UN and African Union, among some other things. But going back to this new organization, let me show you why it would be so significant. And to do that, we just need to look at this map of East Africa, as the idea of a federated region centers around this. Africa's Great Lakes, a series of lakes and rivers that contain approximately 25% of the world's unfrozen freshwater. Collectively, these lakes support more than 100 million people and provide a habitat for wildlife found nowhere else in the world. These lakes are also responsible for the emergence of many independent kingdoms in the area. So what would the world's newest organization look like? Well, for starters, it would become an instant emerging power. Its economy would be worth an incredible $332 billion, competing with other heavyweight African nations such as Egypt or South Africa without a problem. It would also skyrocket into being the fourth most populous country, in addition to being the seventh largest country in the world and the largest country in Africa. It would certainly have the size and wealth to dominate regionally. With natural resources and foreign capital fueling its economy, it has remained one of the fastest growing and one of the most resilient regions in Africa. So this is looking pretty good. A strong and growing economy, relative stability, especially given the region's history, all coming together to make a bright future. And while the individual nations of the East African community are happy to take credit for all this, the EAC wants to promote their cooperation as the standard for regional harmony. This is refreshing on a continent which is normally plagued by corruption, civil strife, foreign meddling and terrorism. And it's been getting a lot of support from places like the EU and you can certainly see the similarities between them. As the EAC has created the regional integration pillars, similar to the EU for freedoms. In addition to being politically federate by the end of next year, something the EU has been trying to accomplish for decades. With an already existing customs union and common market, it seems like it's on the right track. In fact, the East African community is in many ways like the European economic community, the precursor to the European Union. You see, after World War II, European countries banded together to merge their economies in order to prevent future conflicts. Conflict. Then came a customs union, and finally the introduction of the euro. And while the EAC hasn't launched their new joint currency as of yet, they have issued a new passport, although at the time of recording it can only be used within member countries. So there are a lot of similarities between the two communities. Both have free trade and movement between members, and the EAC is working towards a common currency. Europe, for its part, is wanting to make these goals more achievable for the EAC, and links have been made to strengthen those attributes. But while making positive connections with the EU can be helpful in what can be seen as a learning curve, we need to also look at the negatives, of which there are quite a few interesting ones. But before I share those, I want to quickly thank the sponsor of this video, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. Play more than 2000 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships in dynamic combined arms PvP battles. Every vehicle is incredibly detailed, offering a highly immersive combat experience. War Thunder offers action-packed matches, more realistic and tactical experiences, and intense PvP battles at various immersion levels for all playstyles. It offers incredible graphics in 4K resolution, authentic sound effects, and beautiful music creating an atmosphere to fully immerse yourself in. My favorite feature is that no extra pilot hardware is necessary, so you can fly any aircraft using nothing more than just a mouse and keyboard. So play War Thunder now on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link in the description. And if you do, there is a large free bonus pack for registering using my link, including multiple premium vehicles, premium accounts, boosters, and much more. Alright, so according to this guy, the European Union is not a one-size-fits-all approach, and the EU itself is far from perfect. In a paper titled The East African Federation Challenges for the Future, Mondani says that there are three issues that need to be addressed before the idea of a federation can be achieved. Community, 
social justice and citizenship. He goes on to say that while the EU was helpful to Europeans, it is not necessarily the best model to be used for Africans. First, the political community has not entirely demonstrated a commitment in letting go of their centralized power in favor of decentralized bureaucracy. Lofty political requirements means a long and slow process, which could mean the EAF stalls and then falls apart before it even comes together. Some of the member nations have precedents with near dictatorial powers, like President Yuvere Museveni of Uganda who is still in power 36 years after taking it in a coup from another dictator. Or Rwanda's president, Paul Kagame, who has been president for 22 years. In fact, in the recent elections held in April, he won 99% of the vote, something which Human Rights Watch has said was married with violence and was coercive. Next, Mamdani says that new monetary policies and currency production might mean the collapse of the whole idea of a federation. See, the vast majority of Africans in the proposed federation are poor. Very poor. The average GDP per capita is around $1,100. That's about three US dollars per day. So there's a fear that corporations will take advantage of a federation looking to deregulate its economy or allow large corporations access to the nation's vast natural wealth, which really isn't great since the act of moving wealth to outside Africa is something that already costs the continent $80 billion a year. Mamdani says what happened in EU countries like Greece, a country with a huge debt, which then had to reduce government spending, causing financial heartache for Greeks, is something the EAF couldn't survive. Finally, Mamdani worries that African federations have tended to take on an ethnic rather than a territorial or national character. Mamdani considers the history of East Africa as one of genocide and ethnic cleansing, and is an important issue that needs addressing. And across the proposed nation, an over 80 million non-ethnic Bantu minority would mean challenges from the onset of a formation, in a region where tribalism is still an issue stopping further unity. And these are just the bureaucratic problems. Porous borders also mean regular attacks by rebels like M23 movement insurgents, Islamic terrorism and dozens of tribal conflicts. This could all mean that the EAF stalls and collapses for a second time. So there's a real need for local and national change, and it should come from within Africa. That's according to this man at least, Ghanaian political economist, author and president of the Free African Foundation, George Aiti. He says that African problems need African solutions, not imported ones dictated. He believes that rather than looking to institutions such as the EU, Africans need to decide their own destiny, their own way. And one of the reasons for this is the next generation that he calls the cheetah generation. To see what he means, take a look at this graph. It shows how youth populations are set to rise by global regions and if you look at Sub-Saharan Africa, seen here in pink, you'll see that it's the only region set to increase by over 300 million people. For the EAC, their youth population is already 65% of their total population. That's over 200 million people under 30 years old and this number is expected to grow to 75% by 2030. But IAT says the reason why Africa has yet to stabilize like other regions is due to political elites trying to create systems like the EU, but without knowing anything about its institutions or respecting its rules. Dictators use investments from institutions like the EU, claiming they will help modernize the country, but instead line their own pockets in what he calls a failure of the modern sector. He says Africa should not try to be like the EU as they are fundamentally different, and most African leaders do little to improve the everyday lives of their citizens. Many don't even know the EAC exists. According to this poll, a majority of Kenyans have either heard nothing or just a small amount about the proposed East African Federation, otherwise known as the EAF. And 8% said they don't know enough to even comment on the question. So you can see the problem here. The government appears to have done an especially poor job of building awareness among the youth, where only 28% have heard of it. So both Mamdani and Ayeti agree on creating a strong and market-driven East Africa, but the European institutions they are trying to import are, according to them, failing, corrupt and non-traditional to locals, meaning a poor uptake and support for such programs. Unlike Europeans, who welcomed economies of scale in order to make products cheaper and provide at the same time skilled labor and guaranteed job and a high wage. The African model is more centered around local and private enterprises that benefits the community. 
Perhaps this is why the latest plans for a 2024 introduction of the monetary union collapsed, and the 2023 deadline for a confederation of national governments will almost certainly be missed. So whether or not the East African Federation will be seen, I guess only time will tell. But that's it for this video, thank you again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can play War Thunder now on PC, PlayStation or Xbox using my link in the description, and if you do, there is a large free bonus pack for registering using my link, including multiple premium vehicles, premium accounts, boosters and much more.